My name is Felicia Awosanya. I'm a senior biomedical scientist. I work in medical microbiology department, Royal London Hospital Whitechapel. On a daily basis, we get as many as 30 to 40 positive blood cultures come through. 25 or 30 of them turn out to be normal skin flora. All the false positives leads to a lot of hard work because we have to culture them. It leads to a lot of reagents being used, a lot of tests being done. We have to interpret the results and we have to inform the clinicians on the ward when we get a positive blood culture. And this can lead to them putting the patient on unnecessary antibiotics. It would be very nice to have someone come round and show us how to take a perfect blood culture. Excuse me, maybe I can help. The reason for taking a blood culture is to see whether the patient has bacteremia, by which I mean the presence of bacteria in the bloodstream. Bacteremia may be continuous or intermittent. An intermittent bacteremia happens when a focal source of infection, such as an abscess, releases showers of bacteria into the bloodstream. You get continuous bacteremia where there is an endovascular source of infection, such as endocarditis or typhoid. A bacteremic patient will show signs of sepsis, including fever or hypothermia, tachycardia, a drop or increase in blood pressure, raised respiratory rate, and an abnormal white cell count. During the bacteremic episode, they may suffer rigors and become confused. As a spike in temperature is the body's response to the presence of bacteria in the bloodstream, your best chance of getting a positive culture is just as this spike begins. And even the slightest whiff of antibiotics can make the blood culture sterile. So take the cultures before these are given. Even the single organism from the skin can give rise to a false positive. So it's vital to take the blood very carefully to avoid contamination. Here are some tips. Choice of a clean site helps. Avoid femoral stabs, existing cannulae and arterial lines and only sample a central line if you are actively trying to diagnose a line infection. Make sure the site looks clean and wash it with soap if necessary. The same goes for your own hands. Hey, sleeves! Locate your vein carefully. You won't be able to touch it again once you have decontaminated the skin, even if you are wearing gloves. Next, clean the site thoroughly with 2% chlorhexidine in 70% alcohol. The same applies to the port if you are culturing from a suspected infected central line. Don't touch the skin again after this stage. The most important part is making sure the site dries thoroughly, as this is what actually kills the bugs. Now prepare the blood culture bottles. Check they are still in date and in good condition. Then take the protective caps off. The rubber tops are clean but not sterile, so you need to disinfect them too. Again, allow the alcohol to dry completely. Then take the culture. Take as big a volume of blood as possible to increase the chances of detecting bacteria. And inoculate the bottles. But do be careful with the sharps. You can also use a butterfly and special adapters, but the general principles remain the same. Inoculate the aerobic bottle first. This avoids introducing oxygen from the air in the syringe into the anaerobic bottle. Finally, make sure the bottles are correctly labeled. Leave the peeable barcodes on, as these are needed in the lab. The bottles will be safe for 24 hours at room temperature. If you are taking blood for any other tests, remember that these other bottles are not guaranteed to be sterile. If you do all this right, you won't just be saving the lab unnecessary work, you may be saving your patients from getting an incorrect diagnosis and antibiotics they don't need.
Thank you, Robert. With your help, it will reduce our workload, cut down on costs, and decrease the number of unnecessary antibiotics prescribed for patients. Well, it's nice to know I'm still of service. I'd better be getting on with these postulates now.